Well, typically you'll see a drone um, and see it very late because they're, they're small uh, compared to normal aircraft. And, you know, the reality is the ability to take evasive action in those circumstances are quite limited. So typically if you're going to see a drone, uh, there's a high probability uh, if it's on a trajectory that's going to uh, collide with the aircraft, then a collision will result. Um, so this, there's a significant startle factor. Uh, it distracts pilots from their task. Uh, they weren't anticipating a drone to be in their vicinity. Uh, and uh, the reality is the level of risk increases and therefore the level of safety decreases. You know, that puts the aeroplane, the crew, and more importantly, the passengers at risk. When crew are, are operating the aeroplane, they're totally focused uh, on operating the aeroplane safely and, and efficiently. Uh, as soon, uh, and they are trained uh, to deal with distraction management. Um, but typically those distractions are ones that are, are well known and, and uh, have crew have encountered before. What we're seeing now is we're seeing a proliferation of uh, drones in the aviation system. And so these distractions are relatively rare but are increasing. Uh, and you know, they cause uh, issues for crew uh, and that takes them away from their primary task, which is to uh, operate the aeroplane, and as a consequence of that, uh, safety does become compromised. So I consider drones to be a hazard. Large drones typically will be certified, and as a consequence, they will fit into the aviation system. Where the industry concern is, is uh, recreational and smaller drones, where typically the operator doesn't appreciate uh, either the airspace that they're flying in or the rules that they're supposed to be flying to. When it comes to uh, the risk of a collision that is real, uh, smaller drones do pose a hazard to the aircraft in the same way that uh, birds do. And I think there is a gap uh, that exists in the industry at the moment in truly understanding what effect uh, a drone strike could have uh, on an aircraft. I personally don't believe there's a significant risk that an aircraft will be seriously compromised because of a drone strike or an ingestion into an engine. Um, if an engine does fail as a result of a drone strike uh, in a twin engine air, large aircraft, uh, then that's covered by the ability of the aircraft to continue flight uh, quite successfully on, on one engine. Uh, but there could be other effects uh, on the structure of the aircraft, uh, the leading edges of the wings, which are important, uh, windscreens, uh, other probes and sensing devices that exist on the aircraft. And so, you know, we need to do more to understand what that threat is. And I think the industry needs to call for greater research and understanding uh, exactly what effect uh, a, a drone could have on an aircraft. I think the, there is a responsibility by the manufacturers to help educate those people who are purchasing drones. Fundamentally, when a person purchases a drone, they become part of the aviation system. And uh, you know, it's very important that uh, the opportunity is taken to use the drone manufacturers to remind people who are purchasing that that, that is what they now are. And there's obligations, rights and responsibilities associated with operating drones and to ensure that you know, we all keep the safety of the travelling public uh, at the forefront of our minds. Understand that you are part of the aviation system, that, uh, that, um, that drones, are, drones are great. Uh, they're, they're good for recreation, they're good commercially, they are designed to deliver real economic benefit. They are going to be part of the aviation system going forward, they are now, but they're going to be an even more significant part of the system uh, in the future. And hobbyists need to understand that they are part of this aviation system and they have an obligation to operate safely within that. Well, I think it's critically important. Um, we need to have a, a both top-down and bottom-up approach to uh, drone safety. Uh, the regulatory framework needs to be in place, uh, both for recreational users and for commercial users of drones. Uh, but equally as importantly, possibly more importantly, uh, we have to have a educate 
and communicate uh, paradigm that exists uh, with drone operators, uh, particularly at the recreational hobby level. Um, drone users are part of the aviation system. They need to understand their rights, uh, but also their responsibilities and their accountabilities uh, to other airspace users uh, to ensure the safety of the aviation system. I think the biggest fear is uh, the industry not understanding that that um, significant increase in drone activity is going to occur uh, and all of us are obliged to uh, uh, appreciate that uh, increase and embrace it uh, and connect with other um, you know, system users uh, to ensure that that growth is managed, uh, managed appropriately and managed safely. And the particular onus of course is uh, on not only operators to connect uh, with, the, with the drone users, but um, the regulator, uh, the air navigation service providers, uh, and other drone users, um, drone hobbyists, to understand that uh, we all have rights, we all have responsibilities, and we all have obligations to the aviation system to keep, uh, keep it safe. And it's going to provide some challenges, uh, but also some opportunities uh, for, uh, for the aviation system, uh, and we need to manage that uh, appropriately to ensure everybody stays safe.